So a lot of stuff has happened to me. Uh, but my wife has, and I like to tell stories, my, my wife has never ever told me when X happens or Y happens, honey, you should tell, tell that in a story, except for this story. And that's a great uh, preface because it involves American Ninja Warrior. And so right off the bat, so here we go. It's a long story, sort of. Right off the bat, I suck at America Ninja Warrior. Uh, I don't want to misrepresent myself. I've been fortunate to get the call four times now. Um, they clearly have seen something in me that uh, I did not see, and I appreciate that. But anyway, I have had four invitations, three actual competitions. Every single one of those competitions I was, did poorly, but um, they keep asking me back and or inviting me back. And anyway, that said, I knew after the first time I competed on the show, I was never going to be great at it. Um, it's, it's way harder mentally and physically than you can possibly imagine. And I thrive in tough mental situations. So that says a lot. And I've accomplished a lot in the physical, uh, in the physical realm also. But there's a lot of shame involved that I have about how poorly I've done. And I'm trying to deal with it. And I've made posts about it, posts about it over the years. And I love to share that because a lot of other people have that, that, that kind of shame. Um, my wife, has, my wife's family goes to a place just two hours away from DC. It's Cape on Springs and Farms in West Virginia. And we go there every year. She's gone there 45 years now, more than that, more than 45 years. I've gone, I just realized this. I've gone there 22, 21 years in a row. Um, no, 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 sorry, sorry. 19 years in a row because of my son's age. Anyway. Um, large communal dinners um, for all the, all, all the guests at the resort and calling it a resort is a very loose term and so we went there two weeks ago and it's uh, we get the Thursday night first dinner there and we're actually eating out at a pavilion outside al fresco and I'm sitting down I think I've already eaten, eaten taken a couple of bites and I'm at the end of this long table with my, my, my wife's family my family and uh, Betsy's sitting right here. I'm sitting at the end of the table. And someone taps me on the shoulder. And keep in mind, this is only two hours away from DC, but I, in all those 20 some odd years, I've never run, run into anyone I know. And um, someone taps me on the shoulder. And I turn around and, and I see that it's a woman. And uh, someone I vaguely recognize. And she says to me, are you Nate, Nate Wong's father? And I said, yeah, why is he in jail? Because Nate actually didn't come with us on this trip. The first time he hasn't ever in his entire life. Anyway. And I said, uh, yeah, it is. And, and Betsy's like, looks up and she goes, oh my God, Aaron. And I'm like trying to figure out again, I'm out of context. I'm like, what's going on? And, and she goes, hi, you might've known me as, uh, she says her last name. And she was one of the first grade teachers when my son was in elementary school. And my elementary school is a block and a half away. And if I had a really good arm, I could probably throw a ball at it. Uh, my son is going as a junior rising in college, and it's been a long, long, long time. But I remember her name, and I remember that she was a great, she is a great teacher, young teacher, great young teacher. And um, I, and I'm trying to process this. Betsy realizes, recognizes who she is, and they're like, "Oh my God!" Blah blah blah. And uh, I said, yeah, yeah, I yeah. am. And, and, and wow, it's been a long time. And um, she mentions a mutual friend of ours who was a teacher. And she says, oh, she keeps up with you on Instagram. And I said, oh, I know. And she's awesome. And, and, uh, and she's, and just, I forget how it comes out, but she says, she's told me all about nin your American Ninja Warrior. And she said, we love that show. And you know, I was like, oh my God, thank you so much. And thanks for watching. And and I have to ask her, and when she said we, like how many, do you have kids and how many? I said, oh yeah, I've got two kids. And uh, they're right over there. And she points, just points in the direction. So, and I said, oh wow, have you come, have your fam has your family been coming here um, 
often, or and, and that's what happens at this place. It's like generational. Like people come there for decades and decades and decades. So it's if you're there, you've been there a long time. And 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 this is one, a weekend we normally don't go. So we're actually kind of interlopers in because uh, most people go on a set weekend or set weekends. And so we're on we're we're there on a weekend. We're not just yeah. We always come in this weekend because it's the week after school gets out. Totally makes sense. And uh, so she kind of points in the, rest, in the direction and says, yeah, we love the show. And and uh, and I said, okay, thank you. And she says, well, I'll let you guys get back to your dinner. And and uh, I just thought that was really cool. Right. And so we go about our dinner and we're just sitting in our chatting and the whole family's there. And and we, you know, kind of reminiscing about those days when Nate was in first grade. And, and, uh, and I was trying to remember if she, Aaron, was one of Nate's teachers, and Betsy reminded me, no, she was actually one of the teachers. She wasn't his teacher. Like, okay, anyway. Dessert comes, and it's communal. You get up, and I was getting, I don't know, something pie a mode, and I'm waiting in line, and uh, I happen to look over uh, where that table was behind us, and I see Aaron standing there, and she's, like, literally pointing at me, and she's standing with a couple of kids, and they're looking at me, and I realize they're pointing at me, and, um, I had to smile. I didn't actually acknowledge it, but it, it, I had to kind of smile inside. And, and this happens to me a lot. <laughs> and uh, you, I used to think it was my imagination, but it was not in my, imagin my imagination. A lot of people know what I've done in the neighborhood, around wherever, where I'm at, at bike races or whatever. And there's invariably, as soon as I turn around, someone pointing behind me and you know it's nice like that's the guy that's the guy the ninja warrior or that's the guy that's the bike racer or whatever and it's nice it is really nice it's very uh it's a great ego massage so um you know and and whenever i meet someone who either knows about me and the ninja, ninja warrior or just i it comes out of conversation that i've been on the show i immediately say I'm not very good at it. And it's the truth. And it's just to diffuse and not, I don't want to misrepresent myself. But it's an amazing experience, an incredible experience before you even step on the stage. And, and that said, um, the next day I run into some of the kids and they're, they're gobsmacked. And there's just a, a bunch of them and they're just like looking at me and they're just like, awe might be a strong word, but you could tell that they were just impressed. And, and I, you know, I had to introduce myself. Hi, my name's Will, and what's your name, what's your name? And I, they actually came up to my t our table. We, now we're inside, and I, again, for whatever reason, I'm sitting on the end of the table. My brother-in-law's at the end, and my father-in-law's in, in front of me. And so they come up to the end where my brother-in-law is, and kind of looking in between where my brother-in-law and my father-in-law are sitting, looking straight at me, and it's, it's Aaron in tow with uh, a bunch of the kids, we're now an uh, older one. And uh, I asked them what their names are, and they, they well, first they said they're huge fans of the show, and I'm like, oh wow, thank you so much for watching. And I asked them what their names are, and they tell me their names, and and, uh, and Betsy's sitting like right here. And I just thought it was actually they weren't with Aaron; they came by themselves. So that's what makes us more impressive. It's like I know how shy I was when I was 12 years old, and seven years old, or five years old. I would have never had the uh, the nerve to, to walk up to someone. As many times as I'd like one of two, I just didn't have the nerve, and that's shame on me. Um, but I was just really impressed, and I was really just humbled by the, the fact that they'd want to come up all the way to this stranger who they never met and tell them, like, they are fans of, they want to meet me, and that they're fans of the show and everything else. And I, I, I was just touched, incredibly touched. And immediately Betsy next to me, she knows, Betsy knows nothing about the show, keep in mind. And she doesn't, she's not involved at all in, in it, uh, any, at any, any, any part of it. Um, she loves me, but it's just something that's out of her wheelhouse. And um, anyway, she immediately said, ask, ask the girls, well, the girls, ask the kids, what do you love about the show? And... Because she's just, Betsy's asking a genuine, it was a great question because the, the kids said, we love the show. And Betsy asks, not knowing nothing about the show, asks, um, what do you love about the show? It was a genuine question. And, and immediately, the oldest girl, Channing, I believe her name was, says, says to Betsy, I love it when the athletes fall into the water. And she was genuine about it. She wasn't like, oh, she got shot in Freud. It was just like, I just love it. I think it's really cool. And I immediately, my heart just was just 
filled with just warmth. That's what I'm, it just sank and it felt filled with warmth. And I said to Channing, well, that's great because I'm great at falling in the water. And I didn't mean it to be snarky, but it was just um, my way of just letting her know, like, I, I, um, that really meant a lot to me. Because I was ashamed about falling in the water. And so I'm telling Channing and the kids the story about the blue towel. So if you don't know anything about the show, if you ever see a ninja warrior with a blue towel, you know they fell into the water. Um, and everyone falls into the water, not everyone, but most of us most the majority of us fall into the water and having that towel is kind of a sense of pride and 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 the very first year it's a souvenir it's an awesome souvenir i still have i still have all the all of my towels but i, I was explaining to the kids you guys know about the blue towels and they kind of nodded it's like yeah well look, look. if you don't know it's um whenever you fall in the water immediately someone on set hands you a towel and, and they wrap you in it and it's a symbol of you know you falling in the water but it's a i told them it's a great souvenir and I told them how many I have, and uh, they were just—they were. I think they appreciated the story, the behind-the-scenes story. And I said to them, "Thank you very much for saying that. I really, really, really appreciate that." And I really did. I, more Channing saying that meant more to me, and helped. It, it really did genuinely help me process uh, the shame that I have regarding the show, my performance with the show, um, and. I am deeply indebted to her for that. And when I got a, later, I texted our mutual friend to tell her, make sure you tell after I've left, um, to make sure you tell Aaron that uh, what that meant to me. Okay, one more part of that story. The next day, one of the girls comes up to me um, and she's with her brother this time we're a cousin and who's Aaron's son. Anyway, actually no, it's her kids. Anyway, Aaron's kids come up to me and um, it's about the time I'm about to leave. And, and I, you know, I asked them if they had a good time and everything else and, and we're chatting and, and it was just so cute with uh, just this really shy um, but deliberate way. You could tell she wanted to say something to me, but she was really, really shy. And I, I know being that age how hard it is to do what she just did was about to do and she said to me in this incredibly incredibly sweet voice you fall in the water the best and uh <laughs> she meant it and i really melted and it was that little bit that's that helped me process that shame so anyway the point of the story is, wasn't planning on doing that. The point of the story is, whenever you try to do something great, or especially in the public eye, and you've got, got, got a lot of attention on you, and you don't meet the expectations that you wanted to achieve, don't look at it as a failure. Don't, don't look, at, look at it as a learning experience. Try not to have any shame about it, but you will. And uh, just know people see you differently than the way you see yourself. And that's a universal truth. And that's what I've learned actually the last few years about how people envision me. And not having, trying to shed this responsibility of this expectation of me performing at a certain level, be it the American Ninja Warrior or on the bike. Um, you know, on the bike, I don't think anyone expects anything of me because they know what I'm capable of, and it is kind of re it's kind of a relief to go. And if I don't perform well, then they know that there was something wrong, or just you know whatever, and it's not a big deal. I don't see myself as putting so much value in winning or succeeding. It's the journey getting there, and it's not BS. It's it's totally true because if you don't, if you get obsessed about the end goal, end result, end goal. It will leave you empty. It will leave you a broken person because eventually you're not going to be able to achieve that. And if that's all you wanted, uh, it's it's not going to be enough. And so, for these children, these young people, to come up to me and remind me that it's not that end goal. It's how they see me and how they see someone who's able to be on that show, knowing like how special that is, and having seen. I'm sure they've seen my Instagram. And, and, and my social media, what I can do. And uh, that, is, that is all I need. 
you know, that's really all I need. And that really, that last couple weekends, you know, two weekends ago, really just put my mind in the space it needs to be. Um, so that's a long story short, a short story long. Thanks for watching, and I will hopefully talk about more of this in the future, just the whole mindset of competing at a high level. Thanks for watching.